myself. Right. So, who are you? Who am I? Um, I'm the luckiest man I know because I've had so many incredible opportunities to experience my country um, in a unique way that most people don't get to see. I got to see America um, as a paratrooper. And uh, so I got to see my country through the eyes of a defender of my country. You know, something that I needed to protect. Now that I'm a civilian, I kind of think I still have a little bit of that in me. And I want to protect it now as a uh, guardian of our natural spaces, or at least a promoter. At least if I can get up on the rooftops and shout that uh, the national parks are great, our national spaces are great, and we need to protect them, then I'm still doing my mission, right? What's your worst day in the national park? My worst day? I've made a lot of mistakes. I, I spent a lot of time walking before I discovered hiking, and I didn't, for the longest time, I thought walking and hiking were the same thing. Um, when I started with the Park Service, I'd spent a lot of time on my feet, but I didn't spend a lot of time as a seasoned hiker, and I became seasoned um, on the Byron Glacier in Alaska. Um, what I thought was going to be a nice two-hour hike up to see some blue ice turned into a near catastrophe. We got caught in a rainstorm. We had no uh, crampons. We had no rescue ropes. And uh, I slipped and fell on the ice and caught myself with my tripod at the top of a 75-foot crevasse And uh, after sliding about 400 feet down the ice. And uh, it was that day that I, when we finally made it down, 13 hours later, frozen to death, I, uh, I started studying about hiking safety. And I've dedicated myself to that ever since that day and now I'm they joke and call me preparation Frank but I'll never be in that situation again and the things that I've learned I feel like I have a duty to tell other hikers because nobody told me and it almost cost me my life I think or I hope that if I can introduce enough people to the national parks to the outside world to the hiking trails that they'll join me in caring about them enough to want to preserve them. I feel like if we don't use these natural spaces, if we don't love them enough, um, we're going to lose them. You know, they're going to be developed. They're going to be. Um, they're going to restrict access. Um, people are going to take them away from us, or they won't let us use them, or people won't want to use them. But if I can go out there, and I can share with the people what I think the parks are, then maybe I can make just a little bit of a difference. Maybe I can move the needle just a little bit. Uh, uh, describe that feeling of like when you've climbed up to a certain point and boom, you've found it. What are some of those words? Some of those like adjectives, yeah. Individual words. Yeah. It's two-sided. There's, the anytime you make a picture like that, there's a before and after. There's excitement and anticipation, and there's hope that you can capture, or you can get in your camera what you see in your mind, what you see with your eyes, and you're really hoping that you can be accurate and convey, uh, convey the, uh, the emotion of it. And then when you do capture it, quite honestly, it's a little sad because the moment's passed, but at least you have that photograph. You have that, that moment in time that's never going to happen again. It's absolutely unique. It's it's unique and special. It's a time machine. It is a time machine. It locks that moment. There will never be, no matter what picture you take, there will never be another picture exactly like it if you're shooting out in nature. Because the leaves are always moving, the sun's moving, the clouds are moving. Uh, it's Every picture is absolutely unique. And whether whether photographers are doing it on purpose or not, we are the unofficial historians of our time. 
every time we take a picture, you or me or anybody, that's part of our collective time capsule for the world that we live in right now. And a hundred years from now, they may not know the, the stories, they might not know the photographer, but if they have the pictures, they'll know what our time looked like. And we're, we're the historians, we're, we're telling the story of our time every time we hit the shutter. Conservation and art can go hand in hand. It's a, it's a perfect match. It's a great way for a person to celebrate the parks, celebrate nature, and share the parks, and gain an appreciation uh, because you're not just passing by. The diff I talked a little bit ago about the difference between walking and hiking. I thought they were the, the same thing. Walking is something you do, you do to get somewhere. When you're hiking, every step you take, you've already reached your destination. You're there with every step. Every step can be another set of pictures. And when you walk into a natural space with that mindset, you're going to walk more carefully. You're going to appreciate it. You're going to notice the little things. And when you notice the little things, that's when you're going to see the real beauty of nature.